Welcome to the 805 Focus, where we focus on the events, topics, and people that matter to the South Coast. I'm Dominique Simario with TV Santa Barbara. Here at TVSB, we strongly believe in the power of nonprofit organizations and the impact they have on our community. One group in particular that has been particularly powerful in making an impact is the Junior League of Santa Barbara. For nearly 90 years, they've been impacting the lives of women, children, and families right here on the South Coast. To discuss their projects and their mission and future goals, we have two special guests with us here today. I'd love to welcome Angela Balea and Jennifer Nice from the Junior League of Santa Barbara. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. So I'm guessing that most people have heard of the name Junior League or Junior League of Santa Barbara if they live here on the South Coast. But I wonder how many people know exactly what it means. So I'd love to find out a little bit about your organization in particular, but really the history of the Junior League. So tell me a little bit about the background, Angela. Um, the Junior League of Santa Barbara started almost 90 years ago in 1924. Um, our parent organization is the Association of Junior Leagues International. We have over 200 chapters worldwide, and in the early 1900s, a group of women came together. Um, they saw in their community a need to help the community. Um, there was severe depression going on, and this group of women, there were about 60 women, um, joined forces and join, uh, joined together in what we now call the Junior Leagues International. Um, through that movement, if you will, um, they started in Lower East Side, Manhattan, and um, just started doing community service in their community. And through that, they did um, training for their volunteers, and then it became an international organization. So if, if you were to describe to someone, Jennifer, why you're a part of Junior League, kind of, you know, what attracted you to this mission, what would you tell them? I think um, one is the focus volunteerism. So we do have a, a focus um, project for, the, for a remainder of a couple of years, and that this year right now is um, focused on youth literacy. And I wanted an outlet to actually have my volunteerism, make it matter, have it all be in one area. But once I joined the Junior League, I realized that it's a great organization to, cha to train women. So one of the, our focus areas also is to make our volunteers the, the best volunteers in the community and really train them on a number of different subjects. Okay. So with that, you know, training and also your, your focus projects, do you think it's an important role that the Junior League plays in Santa Barbara? I mean, tell me a little bit about the role that, that you see for the Junior League. Right, absolutely. I, we've seen over 500 women in um, Santa Barbara go through Junior League of Santa Barbara. Um, women who start as early as college are women who are in their mid-40s with grown kids, um, whatever it may be. Um, it's an organization that um, gives back to the community financially as well as with our time. Um, and it trains our volunteers to then go out into the community and serve on other board positions that will impact the community just as much as Junior League impacts the community. So tell me about that volunteerism training. Can you give me some examples? I mean, I, I have some ideas of what that might be, but share some examples. You know, what would somebody get when they say, you know, I'm going to be trained in volunteerism from the Junior League of Santa Barbara? We have a training curriculum within our Junior League, and it touches on a number of subjects such as um, fundraising through events or financial literacy for nonprofits. Um, dealing with difficult people and also that's volunteer good. <laughs> for any any aspect of life, yeah, I think, exactly. maybe. Yes. And I think that's the one thing about our training program is it's more than just for our volunteers. They can take these ideas and these lessons that they learn through our program mm -hmm. and and expand them into their corporate world and their personal lives and whatnot. So. Right. It's, it's a great program. Um, it, every year we, we come up with different speakers to come into our community and actually speak, and, and I think people walk away with great knowledge out of it. What about the fact that it is Junior League of Santa Barbara, it's, it's women. Mm -hmm. um, 
do you think that's an important element of the organization, something that kind of separates it, differentiates mm -hmm. it from other groups in town? Mm -hmm. And I think um, the women that were that started it in the early 1900s, there were many men's groups that men could join, and there was nothing really specifically for women that they can join, get trained, have volunteer time, you know, gain friendships. Um, and so that's why another reason I think that they started it. Um, and it's super important for women to be able to have a voice and to be able to be trained and um, go out into the community and do good things. Absolutely. Was the fact that it was uh, you know, a women's group important to you, Jennifer? Absolutely. I, I actually had moved into town here 10 years ago and I was um, struggling to meet people. Mm -hmm. But then also, again, like I said, I wanted a focused area to put my volunteer hours into. And you walk away from these groups and these different committees that you're on and you become best friends with some of these women. And it's a great networking opportunity as well. I um, actually recruited one of my employees from the Junior League of Santa Barbara. So it's wow. great networking as well as friendships and a learning organization and then also volunteerism. Mm -hmm. It's so. kind of multiple facets then. Uh, one that uh, we really would love to touch on because we think it's really an incredible and important part of your organization are the community impact projects. Uh, do you guys, I know the one that you're working on now is the Children's Library Project, correct? Mm -hmm. Can you give me some examples of what are other projects that you guys have done in the past areas that you have impacted? Um, well, we um, have a long history, obviously, because we've been here for 90 years. Um, one thing a lot of people don't know is that we helped start the Santa Barbara Zoo. Um, no. That, yes. yes. Um, you need to like, write that all over the place. I, I don't yes. think many people know yes. that. That's yes. incredible. Yes. So um, through our volunteerism and um, our community effort, we helped um, secure that property and just establish what the zoo is today. We've also um, worked with um, what is called the SART Cottage, um, which is a cottage close to um, Cottage Hospital for women who have been sexually abused, a safe place for them to go and um, have their, um, you know, have tests done, have the police do their reports and things. Um, we have also um, done well baby gowns for um, young babies. We've um, what else have we be the done? Match. Well, worked uh -huh. with Be the Match, the bone marrow matching oh, yeah. registry. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Worked with Transition House in um, mm -hmm. renovating their space and, and right. now working with the um, Big Brothers Big Sisters, FSA, mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. a, a little project with them as mm -hmm. well. Our um, focus area um, of youth literacy has been in effect for about seven years and that initiated um, our new members every year do a new member project in which we train them and give them the tools to go out into the community and make a difference. And so our new members about seven years ago chose to renovate the Eastside Children's Library um, right. just right over here. And I've seen that. It looks uh -huh. amazing it's, with the art on yes, the walls absolutely. and mm -hmm. it's really a welcoming yes. space. Yes, exactly. And so and that's kind of what we try to do is um, give them the tools to be able to do that and then they go out and um, complete the these projects and from that um, we discovered that youth literacy was a need in our community Absolutely. and um, we ha certainly have the volunteer capacity and so we wanted to be able to serve in that capacity. So tell me Jennifer a little bit about what this you know youth literacy as that your focus group what does this mean? It's been going on for some years now um, Tell me a little bit more about the project. Well, the great thing about it is we not only have fundraising goals for youth liter literacy, but we also do little projects that we call impact projects or done in a day. And most of those are revolved around literacy. So we'll be at the Children's Library and we'll do something such as the Winter Wonderland. And it's a place from usually around 11 to noon or 12.30 that parents can bring their kids in and do arts and crafts projects. Or we read to them or we do a project on a certain book series. And it, so our members are organizing the event and then also volunteering the event and, and actually being with the children and reading to them and, and teaching them. So those impacts projects are great. They're, we have over... This year alone, probably over a thousand hours with our um, with our members volunteering for for impacts trainings and our fundraisers. Wow, uh, you spoke about fundraisers. Um, yeah, how how do you go about raising 
the money. I know you, I could imagine the volunteer time that would come from these hundreds of women, which is incredible, but I'm sure the fundraising is an important element. Yeah, being in the community for almost 90 years now, we have an incredible community. And um, as you know, being a nonprofit in Santa Barbara is um, a privilege. There are so many other nonprofits. Yes, and we're quite <laughs> well aware of that. But, but it's, it's, you know, it's a high mm -hmm. caliber to Ab be a part of. Absolutely. And it, that feels Ab good. Absolutely. And right. so we have um, community partners that have just partnered with us throughout the years that are willing to give back and um, different ways, and then um, we have fundraisers that we can help um, build that partnership with. So, Just recently, I believe it was last year or the year before, we were able to give our library pro fund project, which um, we're looking to renovate the children's library, which there isn't a children's library at the moment or a space um, downstairs in the downtown library. We were able to give over $30,000 to that campaign um, just by fundraising within our members. I mean, I alone did a, a bike race yeah. and raised money during my bike race to do this fundraising campaign. So you put women on a mission and they're going to get it done. They're going to raise the money and That's have fun doing it. Group, yes. I'm right. sure. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yes, I like what you said though, on a mission, on a yes. positive mission, yes. which is sometimes <laughs> it's better when it's on a positive mission, yes. I think. Yeah. So, um, you know, the interesting thing about the, the youth literacy, but there's also a lot to do with the families, I noticed. You mentioned when you're having those reading days at the library, I mean, the families are coming in. Um, over the winter, you had the Festival of Trees, and that was really all about bringing the families out and interacting. Um, kind of on a larger scale, not so much just related to the Junior League of Santa Barbara, but do you think it's important for these families and the youth to be interacting and involved in a positive scale? Absolutely. I think, um, you know, studies show that the more parents are involved with their kids, um, the higher level of academics they're going to re receive through, um, you know, homework help and things like that. And so um, parents, it's important to train parents so that, that way they know how to interact and read with their kids the importance of reading daily with their kids. Um, because if parents don't know, then unfortunately the children aren't exposed to that at home. They may get it at school, but not at home. Right, absolutely. I feel like then your impact is also, you know, it's, it's uh, magnifying. Absolutely. Right. Yes. Yeah. That's really yeah. great. Yeah. So um, what are some future events then that you have going on? Yeah, so we have um, every spring we do some sort of a fundraiser. So we have okay. Prohibition in the Polo Fields coming up this spring, which will be really fun, a very um, Prohibition-themed party. Um, and who doesn't love an event at the Polo Fields? Yes, um, it's a nice Right. Yes. We're gotcha. still in the planning phases for that, but it, what we hear is it. These women who are on this committee are doing a great job in the different um, food vendors and um, the events that they're going to have all around the Roaring Twenties. Mm -hmm. So encouraging people to dress up um, in that theme, which will be a really fun event. Um, and that's a, a great thing for us to do every spring, to do some sort of big, big fundraising event um, within the community. Yeah. Right probably increases your community ties, right? And your presence within the community and Absolutely. letting people know what these fundraising dollars go towards Absolutely. too, right? Yes, okay. yeah. I mean, that would seem like an important element of that. Right, So, yes. okay. Kind of taking it on um, a bigger scale then. So there's, you know, these projects and there's, um, you know, the women and the volunteerism training. Why do you think it's important, though, for women in our community? You know, right here in Santa Barbara, why is it important that for them to sort of come together um, and be a part of a group together as women? You know, we all live right here. Why do you think that's important? There's power in numbers, and just a couple of people, there are many leagues throughout the country that may only have um, a half a dozen to a dozen women, and they still get the job done. Um, we are fortunate in Santa Barbara that we are over 100 women, and the ties that people have, um, the connections people have, um, it all just helps the greater picture in helping support the mission and vision of the Junior League of Santa Barbara. 
And do you, do you find that it's empowering for you to be around these other women who are doing such good things? Absolutely. I think, as I was talking earlier about the, the uh, networking component of it, you, you, you get with these women and you realize what they do for their day jobs. Yeah. And we have some very powerful women in our community and, and volunteering for us through the Junior League of Santa Barbara. And then you get with them uh, on your committee meetings at night, having a glass of wine, and you get to know them on a personal level. But then also, when it comes along that you need to pick their brain about their career, let's say they're a lawyer or they're in PR or whatnot, you have that resource available. And it just empowers you to become better because you have your, your network and your resources, but also to learn more from, from this great group of women. Right. And we have um, over probably 300 sustainers that have gone through the Junior League, either of Santa Barbara or another Junior League nationwide. And um, these women have laid the groundwork for us. And so they have um, really done, you know, tremendous amount of work in our community to um, create a well-established organization for us. And these older women, you know, they're knowledgeable to be able to pick their brains on, you know, what worked for them for fundraisers, what worked for them for community projects, and um, moving forward working with them. And I feel like um, something that has come up, you know, a lot is about women helping build up other women. Um, you know, it is not about, you know, women's rights or, you know, anything like that, but just about supporting each other because so often women are the first to be critical of each other, um, which is really sad, but honest. <laughs> um, you know, and I feel like if there's a supportive group where women can go and come together and say, because you're stronger, I'm stronger. I feel like that's a really positive message to get out there. Yeah. And our women, we rely on each other a lot. Um, we had a member recently do a roundtable called Leading with Grace, and she had two leaders in the community who are women. And during this roundtable, it was great because they talked about how you should su support other women within mm -hmm. your community, but also within your career, and rather than the typical where you may not be supportive. So it, we have members who have the initiative that they just want to do that on their own time and put together this round table and educate other women. So yeah. it's a great group. Um, everyone's super motivated and it's a fun group to be a part of for sure. And I originally had joined um, because I love the focus of promoting um, and improving youth literacy in our community. Oh, that's really and so, um, and I since then have gained some of my best friends that I would have never expected to have um, that mutual understanding and you know you work together, you play together and um, they're some of my best friends in the whole entire world. It sounds like talking about the organization, um, it's volunteer run, is that absolutely, correct? Absolutely, yeah. So it's 100% volunteer run. That's really yeah. incredible. Yeah. And that's really something to be proud of. Yeah. To survive <laughs> for 90 years is, is up there. But uh -huh. to survive off of volunteers, that's mm -hmm. really, really something Absolutely. to be proud of. Absolutely. And I'm assuming then it would probably make people feel really good about giving, though, too, because they know that the funds are going back to these causes. Right. Right. Absolutely. That's really important. Um, so... What would you want somebody to know about the Junior League that they might not know? Somebody's watching and they say, oh, I had no idea. Right. Um, a lot of people don't know that it's a diverse group of women. Um, there are many women that are stay-at-home moms as well as professionals. Um, we have all races. Um, we have all economic status. And so it's a, it's a very diverse group of women, and you can really learn from other women in that capacity. So. Yeah. Absolutely. I think, um, like we've just been talking about, the power of women. When you get a bunch of women together and what they can accomplish is amazing. Um, I think that the Junior League sometimes is known for our volunteerism, which is great, mm -hmm. but we also raise money to give back to our community partners. Um, and year after year, we're giving back to great organizations that are so thankful for the help that we have this group that are able to make this money and do fundraisers and do these events for them or do these projects for them um, that our, our annual meeting in May is a, such a great, powerful meeting to see those community partners and to, to be able to give back to them. Tell me more about that. What's, what's a community partner? And so you're, you're giving back to organizations within the community. 
We feel very fortunate um, that people are giving us money um, and our fundraisers, and so we like to give back to the community through our volunteer service as well as through monies that will be um, beneficial to that organization. So specifically, um, last year we gave about $5,000 to maybe five to six different nonprofits in Santa Barbara. Incredible. And um, one of them that um, is fun is we donated money to Calm. Um, they had a program going on where they had um, some trained dogs coming in and reading with some of the children. And so, and they found out that um, the dogs um, reduced the anxiety level with these children, and they were able to just be themselves. And the children were able to read to these dogs in an environment that was safe and comfortable for them. And so we were able to, this is I think their first year that Calm has done this, we were able to help support them in that effort. So That's a really neat mm -hmm. program to yeah. help sustain. And Calm uh, stands for Child Abuse Listening and Mediation. Mediation. Perfect. So that's a really amazing thing to support and using something that seems probably a little bit on the cutting edge, you yes. know, working the animals and the children working together. Yeah. Yeah. So... That's really neat. And so you're able to give to organizations such as that mm -hmm. with funds that Junior League of Santa Barbara members raised. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Um, specifically, they're called our Community Assistance Funds. And um, our, our local partners can apply for these funds year after year. Usually, we're in the winter time or early, mm -hmm. early in the year, they apply for the funds. And we as a board decide about um, which programs are um, we want to give to and then present them at in our May meeting or our spring meeting, which is really fun. And, and most of the programs, um, you know, a lot of people apply for these programs. And um, so we specifically um, support programs that promote youth literacy in our community. That makes so, sense. Mm -hmm. the reading with yeah. the animals. Uh -huh, uh -huh. That's yes. perfect because that is your project focus. Right. So exactly. that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So Incredibly, we're already starting to get to the end of the show, but I feel like, again, um, you know, really looking at the larger picture, what are some of the challenges that women face? Um, and, I, you know, we all face challenges, absolutely, but I feel like since we have a women's yeah. group, like, yeah. let's, <laughs> let's own this, you know, um, to try to accomplish things and try to, to make change in the community. What do you think some of the challenges and stereotypes are? You know, this is just you guys speaking on a personal level. I don't want to make you, you know, own this as Junior League of Santa Barbara, but really just creating that dialogue about what are some of the challenges that we have out there? Right. Well, I still think that um, women, unfortunately, are not paid um, equal to men, and that is something that I think, unfortunately, um, throughout, the, throughout the day, women will suffer because of, um, and also just learning that women can be in powerful positions. Um, women can be leaders of schools, women can be um, presidents of banks, they can be the president of the United States if they wanted to. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just something that, you know, um, we have to overcome. And I think that one thing that we definitely have going for us is time management, um, which is maybe more than other. <laughs> but um, w within the Junior League, we see that a lot mm -hmm. because these our women are volunteers, yes. and they are volunteering yeah. their extra time to our um, projects and to our initiative. And they have full-time jobs, they have kids, they have husbands, but they're still spending a couple hours a day or a couple hours a week with the Junior League of Santa Barbara. Mm -hmm. So time management is great, and I think women do that very, very well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's true. Capitalize on our assets, absolutely, right. and really own those yeah. tools that we have mm -hmm. to affect change. Yes. Yeah. So for our viewers watching, um, what would you say to encourage them to do something, men and women? <laughs> this, this doesn't have to be. We encourage everybody to, to make positive changes out there. Um, what would you do to encourage them to, to make a change in their community? You know, we, this is our community, the South Coast. This is where we all live. So what would you do to encourage them? Um, my focus this year, um, my theme, if you will, has been make it matter. And um, with that, I want every women in our organization as well as any person I come into contact with to be able to really look at their day and make it matter. What are they going to do differently that um, will make them smile in a different way? 
how are they going to impact um, their coworkers? How are they going to um, really make it matter? Are they going to put down their phone so they can have a 30-minute conversation with a friend? Um, you know, whatever it may be, just to make it matter in their daily life. That's really a, a powerful lesson because we can do a lot every single day, you know. And even like you said, if it's a one-on-one -on -one conversation, that can make a difference as well. Yeah. What do you think? I think I just kind of roll off of Angela's. Her theme this year has been really great, and it does, it does make us all think. Okay, what what can we do in a day that will either make ourselves happy or make somebody else happy? Um, mm -hmm. Is that holding the door open for somebody? I think our society has gotten gone a little down route, downhill in the manners department. So, is it holding the door open for somebody? Is it paying for the parking for the person behind you? Is saying you know, thank you. yeah, saying thank you. All those little things mm -hmm. that. You know, if one person does it, the next person will do it for the next person, right. and then we'll have a community of right. very manners-focused <laughs> people. <laughs> you know, it's amazing because neither of you said um, they should go out and spend all day Saturday, you know, volunteering. Not that it wouldn't be helpful every so often or when possible, right. but the little things do add up to make a difference, and we all can do them. Mm -hmm men, women, young, old, it doesn't matter. So um, with that, I really want to thank both of you again. Jennifer Nice and Angela Bolea, thank you so much for being a part of the show and sharing your stories and also the stories you know, of the Junior League of Santa Barbara. Um, really appreciate it. If somebody wants to find out more information, you can actually visit their website at JL santabarbara.org find out more about their upcoming events their focus project and i'm sure about becoming a member so uh, if you're a woman out there watching consider that and finally to watch this show and other tv santa barbara programming you can visit our website at tvsb.tv i want to thank you for watching as a viewer but i also want to thank our crew um, both staff of TV Santa Barbara, and also our volunteer crew. We could not make this happen without you. So until next time, thank you so much for watching the 805 Focus, where we focus on the events, topics, and people that matter to the South Coast.